Okay, that, this fight was pretty one-sided. And for the first time, this is actually a one-sided fight on the side of the heroes. But you know, my friends, I don't know if I'm cringing about this or if it's just awesome. I think it's a combination of both. As we see, just how dangerous Melilio really is. And well, let me tell you, she's so dangerous that I don't know what to think, really. In fact, the, the very fact that... Um, uh, Noel's mother apparently uh, uh, were the only one who all who could defeat her. Just further proclaims just that Noel's mother must really have been one powerful person too. Oh well, this is pretty insane. Again, a part of me is though cringing. Not the fact that the good guys is having all of this standards. The fact that this just further shows that Melilio sometimes can be a little bit heartless because she is literally a beast. Hi for those who are watching the Black Clover chapter 1 through 7, do I mean. So, well, it's uh, we see Melodio's fighting style. And yes, it is not like your typical fighting style. It's not even like Yami's. Yami is also a little bit of a close-ranged sword fighter. However, Melodio combines her enormous amount of magic and fire into brute force, similar to attacking a wild animal, a clone's rage fighting magic. As uh, Liar heals his wounds pretty quickly using his imitation on magic, he decides to uh, get a little bit more serious and uses the, Im light, the light magic first, which Melilio, despite the fact that they are light, burns away with fire and fisticuts alone. After that, um, she's also so fast um, that Liar had to disappear in order to avoid a hit. Apparently, that's them using the magic from the invincible magic that the violent orca captain had. This is actually a callback. You all remember the fact that for some uh, liar is undercover in the you know in uh, the magic knight system. However we still is not sure who he is imitating so to speak or who is uh, who he really is. But this does confirm that he have been there. He has touched the grimoire of Violent Orca, which probably means that it's not a plot hole. We really will find out who Liar is portraying. Because if he has the Violent Orca captain's grimoire, then that probably means that uh, that scene where everyone were there is very likely canon in the fact that Liar is on the cover or something. Either way, he tries to use water magic, but uh, Melilio just breaks through that with uh, reaction and uh, power magic alone. It apparently so that uh, Liar can even imitate spirit magic, proving that his imitation magic really is broken. It's just the problem is, uh, well, I think we could call it here a clash between broken powers, because Liar can practice basically use every single element there is and every single magic as long as he touches the grimoire however the fact that his opponent is is melilio is just uh, even more broken because she just destroys every single magic with her enormous amount of ma powerful destructive fire magic and brute strength alone so it's a basically a match between broken abilities and we see a little bit more about Sora's personality here. We actually see that, you know, so I'm, st I'm finally starting to like Sora more. Because here it's revealed that he is... I mean, I'm, I'm not a smart guy, so I don't really like smart people in manga anime. But it's usually when the fact that when you think what they... When they look like thugs and all that stuff, and then you suddenly see that they are a lot more clever than they look. Those kind of people really surprise, delightfully surprise you, you know. According, um, according to history, what uh, Sora find out, Melilio uh, felt stuffed in the royal capital and apparently went out to join nature for th th 300 days. Uh, how many days is... Uh, wait, uh, it's... I'm, I'm bad at math, sorry, but was it 361 or 62 days... Uh, in one year, hmm. that will almost make it one year for her to be uh, out in the nature, so to speak. Um, um, almost an entire year. 
so she uh, began to well eat wild meat there and apparently you living in nature becoming a harmony with it and as as uh, sorry and also uh, fighting for survival apparently allowed her to become uh, more powerful like a beast because she basically absorbed the man mana naturally into herself she adapted to the nature nature adapted to her she became one with nature and therefore she became more powerful that way that is why she is so unbelievably strong she's basically a nature's uh, mana fighter uh, the living incarnation of a Gaia rage some some almost despite the fact that she is fire uh, she is an ability even greater than mana skin which probably means that she's stronger than Yami, because no one else has this kind of ability. It also answers why she didn't have to use her mana skin when getting uh, up uh, the volcano. I think uh, Juno stands no chance against her. And also, the fact that Sora is also smart here is that, that he is able to identify Liar's magic, even, the, even though this is the first time he's seen him. He identifies his imitation magic is the fact that uh, he can basically use every single element there is. And uh, the fact that he has an immense amount of magic helps that thing. And here is and here is actually lampshading what I said earlier. Normally, Lyre would be the, the worst opponent for a normal mage, because basically he could adapt to everything. How a broken power, basically. However, as I said before, He's fighting Melilio, someone who's using brute force, brute power, and brute magic force alone to destroy the magic, making this uh, Melilio his natural enemy. And of course, Astar, well, he is just amazed by this. Well, he is the type of guy who likes uh, the heart-hitting moments. So now I'm beginning to wonder, will Melilio actually teach Asta some stuff? I mean, she doesn't really sound like the type of girl that would ever take someone as an apprentice. However, if she's living in nature for 300 days, maybe she will throw in Asta to survive there for 30 days or whatever. I mean, Asta cannot absorb nature, I know that. However, uh, if it weren't for the magic power, Melilio is basically just fighting with pure physical strength alone. And this is Asta we're talking about, a guy who has no magic and he's fighting with brute strength. In a way, that will make it uh, great for him to get strong. Suddenly, a liar tries to pull out a surprise as he suddenly draws out an anti-magic sword, or what we actually presume is an anti-magic sword, revealing he could even cop that. However, it is not an anti-magic sword. He can copy the sword, but not the anti-magic. As we see another uh, flashback of his youth, apparently... Lich to praised his imitation ma magic, saying that he is kinder than anything else. However, Liar himself never saw him as someone who is uh, kind and someone who watches others and truly care for. Th therefore, it is a bit. Lich saw the fact that his imitation magic was because he cared for people and that he uh, yeah, analyzed them. However, Liar is a lazy, lying, and perfidious person, according to him. So. Um, and he considered Lich to be the kind one. And uh, everyone, uh, and the humans killed him. So he will kill the humans. As Melilio crushed the fake anti-magic sword, saying that it's nothing but appearances, Liar finally freaks out for real, and realizes that Melilio has an unknown human strength that no one has said. She decides to finish this as she throws mad fisticuts, burning Liar almost away. But the chapter ends, so we do not know yet what will happen. If Again, the cringeworthy stuff was the fact that it was a, basically a battle between broken abilities. Melilio is a bit cool, but she's also a bit obnoxious with the fact that she is powerful, and she knows it. Those are the kind of people I don't really stand. Cause, um, but she does seem to have a, a like her Sundere side. There was some extra pages. I re recall that something about the youth of the uh, Vermilion siblings, but who knows? Yeah, this is so. This explains it all. Melilio is the brute kind of force girl. She's sexy as hell. However, you do not want to cross her. She has surpassed the uh, mana skin beyond anything else. So is this the end of Liar? Then 
How is this arc gonna end then? What about that true awakening? If Liar truly awake, unless of course he already has, then maybe Melody would struggle a little bit more. It is also the fact that Asta has yet to get any action. Is Juno gonna get the, be the only one to get action? I mean, I want Mimos and Noel to get some action too, but I have a feeling like it's only Juno who's gonna get some. Because, well, in the end, Asta will be left out. So all in all, it was amazing fights. Some a little bit cringeworthy with the, uh, with the broken powers, but other than that, it made pretty sense. Give me your thoughts if you have any.